Oh man. So it's one nothing. The Habs have won four straight hockey games, three against Toronto, one against Winnipeg. I said they can't win goal scoring fests, but they literally win a goal scoring fest here. I literally said in all the videos before, the Habs can't win games five to three. Specifically five to three, and then they win this game one five to three. But uh yeah, even though they won. Even though I cheer for this team, even though I was very happy with what I saw out there from the Canadians today, I don't know if anybody is really too happy to see how that game ended. Even though it's a 1-0 series lead, which is really, really good, man, this fanbase, seems like everything has been sucked out of the fanbase because my goodness, Mark Shifley, what the hell was that, bro? What the hell was that? I like Mark Shifley. I really do. I've been hyping this guy up ever since he was on the 2016 Team North America World Cup of Hockey team, or whatever the heck it was called. He's a great player. Really skilled. Really overall just talented. But holy crap, what was that? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Jake Evans on his birthday. Let's just get it out of the way right here. First goal of the playoffs. Absolutely great. He was so good in this game, Jake Evans. Playing on that shutdown role. Being an extra guy to go out there and create space. He was so effective today. And he gets rewarded for his hard effort by scoring the empty net goal on his birthday to make it 5-3. to three. But after the goal, he gets absolutely rumbled. Absolutely just taken down by a charging Mark Shifley who leaves his feet. He leads with his shoulder up into the top area of Evans and he gets completely wiped out. Evans kind of windmills over to the ice. He falls onto his head and you can see the passion from the Canadians, man. Shea Weber comes out there. He's yelling his head off at Shifley. He's probably the angriest out there, which is... You know, I mean, at the very least, it's great to see the passion for the Canadians and the camaraderie that exists within that hockey team. But just the entire reason that Shifley went out there and did that, you know, you could feel the frustration from this guy coming out. Earlier in the period, he ended up taking a two-minute minor penalty because Ben Sherratt, of all people, his former teammate Ben Sherratt, was kind of grabbing at him from behind. Afterwards, Shifley turned around and started going after Sherrod even more, but he was a little bit too rough there. And as a result, he was sent to the box. In the box, they were showing off footage of Shifley just watching the play. The Jets did kill off that penalty kill, by the way, so it's not like Shifley costed his team a goal. They were still losing, so it's not like it was the most detrimental part of the game or whatever. But you can see in the penalty box, Shifley's just sitting there. And when you watch it, you're like, okay, this is kind of why two-minute penalties exist in the way that they do, right? If you have players that are heated, angry guys that are frustrated because they were indignantly called to the penalty box, you sit down, it's two minutes of gameplay, a few extra minutes if you include the whistles and all that, and you calm down. You stay in the penalty box and you calm down. You use it as a little, you know, self-reflection kind of therapy session. You look up at the Jumbotron, you see what you did. Sure, you're angry a little bit, but you use these two minutes to calm down so that when you get back on the ice, you no longer do things that harm your hockey team. But Mark Shifley, man, this guy didn't cool down. Absolutely didn't. This guy was still super pissy about everything, so what does he do? Oh, he sees the guy that's going to score an empty net goal. He's frustrated that goal's probably going to go in. And then he completely takes him out. It's a five-minute major. Elliot Friedman has the call over here. It is a charging major as well as a game misconduct called on Shifley. We'll see if he ends up getting the book thrown at him, if George Peros and NHL player safety and all of them are able to do something about this, if Shifley is in the series, out of the series, if he sticks around. You could debate whether or not Mark Shifley was even that big of an impact in this game right here, aside from, you know, of course, the hits and the frustration. But that's the end of the game. Ultimately, it's 5-3. to three. And Jake Evans, he gets stretchered off, he gives a fist bump to one of his teammates, and hopefully we see a little bit more out of this guy. Happy birthday, Jake Evans, you got yourself a goal, and it was a very important one at that because it sealed the deal for Montreal taking Game 1 against Winnipeg.
Aside from that, though, let's get into the actual game here, because before all that stuff happened, this game was honestly a pretty fun one to watch for Habs fans, because Winnipeg's worst version just absolutely came out here. And by that I mean, it's a game where the Winnipeg Jets just pretty much only rely on Connor Hellebuck, because the rest of this team is busy going out there giving up odd man rushes and really good zone time. The Montreal Canadiens just absolutely had a ball in this one. Picking the puck up, beating out a D-man, and coming in on a two-on-one. We had so many odd man rushes for Montreal. And to be fair, it's not like they were scored on all the time. Either way, though, the Montreal Canadiens went out there and kind of proved everything that I said and critiqued about this team in the previous few weeks wrong. They scored a power play goal. It's Jeff Petrie with the blast and KK with the tip. Beautiful right there. Caught Kanyemi getting himself another playoff marker. Crazy to think how good this guy has been. You have yourselves a goal from Eric Stahl, of all people. It's Corey Perry driving to the net off of a nice little passing play there. Eric Stahl in front gets the goal. Corey Perry, by the way, what an absolutely great game from this guy. On the power play, I just noticed it today, but Corey Perry is so poised, so confident, and the little moves that Perry does to dangle the puck around a defender and send the pass off at a different angle. It's so slight, but it's incredibly effective. And it's that veteran presence of mind that allows Corey Perry to be able to do that in tight spaces, in tight situations, when you have the puck on your stick with limited time to work with. The Canadians had a really good amount of puck cycling on the power play as well, led by Gustafson, Caulfield, and Suzuki. However, in the first period, you have yourselves a Gustafson chance that doesn't work out well. He tries to one-time slap pass it to Suzuki. It doesn't work. It goes wide. The puck gets fed back to Gustafson, and he's under pressure. He tries to play it back to Suzuki, but it bounces off a skate. Eventually, it's a shorthanded opportunity for Adam Lowry. He comes in. He scores. It's 2-1. to one. Shorthanded goal there, Gustafson, man, this is kind of what Philadelphia Flyers fans were warning us about Gustafson, eh? The defensive turnovers and the coverage. Uh, it's not the best, but hey, I won't make it seem like Gustafson was an absolutely terrible player in this game. He's been good on the power play for the most part. Not gonna make it seem like one play is gonna devalue everything else that he has done. Afterwards, though, it's Nick Suzuki who restores the two-goal lead by coming in on a two-on-one rush. He fakes the pass so hard that everybody clogs up the middle. He walks his way right in front, dangles out Connor Hellebuck, and scores to make it 3-1. to one. What a beautiful goal by slick Nick Suzuki over there. Probably the best goal he has scored in his career. I can't believe the poise, the patience, the ice in his veins to go out there and try such a ballsy move on Connor Hellebuck of all people. And at this point, I'm kind of thinking the Canadians are going to run away with it. Like, it's only the first period and Paul Byron gets another one. But wait, this one was called back because of goalie interference by Kotkaniemi. Eventually, it's a power play for Winnipeg. And I was thinking, okay, if that one went in... That could have been, like, the absolute nail in the coffin for Winnipeg, because there's no way they would have come back from 4-1 down, right? Only losers blow 4-1 leads, right? Okay, I'm not gonna toot that horn a little bit. Okay, sorry Leafs fans, sorry Oilers fans, don't want to do that too much over here, but, uh, yeah, oh my goodness. It's 3-1, to one, stays 3-1, to one. the second period has a whole bunch of 2-on-1 -on chances for Montreal, Caulfield and Suzuki going out there. You have some really good opportunities for them. They don't bury one on this chance here, but eventually the third period comes out, still 3-1, to one, and eventually it's a really interesting play here because it's Brett Kulak who, on the boards, gives up the puck. Eventually it's Dubois with the steal. He sends it over to Derek Forbert, of all people, and he shoots and he scores. It's 3-2. to two. They're within one right here, and I'm thinking, you know what? That Paul Byron... Kotkaniemi thing with the goalie interference, that was really impactful. If that had just gone in properly, we would have not been in this situation where it's a one-goal game with a few minutes left in the third. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen here? And all of a sudden, okay, there we go. Shea Weber with a breakaway on a power play. Hellebuck with the save and Gallagher on the rebound scores. It's 4-2 Montreal. 
You can say what you want about the refing, but man, this one was weird either way. I'll just leave it at that. We'll talk a little bit more about the refing in game two if things continue to be weird. Eventually, though, we have ourselves some more stuff at the end of the game. It's the Shifley to the box thing. It's the Kyle Connor cross crease goal from Nikolai Ehlers that eventually makes it four to three, and then Evans makes it five to three, and then the Evans thing happens. Oh boy. It's one nothing Montreal, eh? All the Jets fans who went out there and said, oh, we're going to do a double sweep, back-to-back -back sweep, bait in a row, eh? We're going to do it, right? Yeah, sorry. Jake Evans was the deal here, and uh, yeah, Mark Shifley, I don't know if he's going to come back. If he does, then my gosh, now some Kadri gets like eight games or whatever it is, and Mark Shifley gets however many for whatever it is that he does. I just hope that NHL player safety is consistent with this one. Talk to me in the comments what you thought about this game. I hope you enjoyed this. This is Ashwell's 9-9. And bye.